Okay, welcome back to Sabado Sessions podcast. I'm your host Joe. We got Espin on the, on, and uh, we got Durance as well. And today we've got Mo. Introduce yourself, please, brother. Uh, hello, my name is Abdulmajid Salomon, and I compete as a one of five lifter in the GBPF. All right, cool. Yeah, so we're, we have Mo on today, so we're gonna f- fire some quick questions, real quick. Uh, we've been meaning to have him on, but I, I guess the first question that comes from me is that. You know, you're the you're the only one I know that has a, a bit more media presence, more diverse um, for in the GPF with like your YouTube and everything. I did watch it uh, a couple of years back, definitely last year before the 2021 British and your prep for it. What 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 brought you to start your own YouTube, start recording like your prep for everything and everything, and just having that kind of media presence as opposed to just a singularity where it's just Instagram. Uh, So I started, um, so I've always been a fan of playing with cameras. So I've always liked messing around with cameras from like a young age. And then during, I think I started YouTube during lockdown, actually. I think it was either slightly before lockdown or during lockdown. And I just wanted, I had extra free time, but I just thought it would be cool to like document. Because I I think during lockdown, I was very convinced I was going to stay in the sport for as long as it took. And I was going to cross over from being a junior to being an open lifter. Mm. So one thing I was hearing back then was a lot of juniors don't make it to the open. So I was like, okay, my plan is to stay in this sport for a long time. So let me document the journey to actually show you that you can cross over and like, this is what it takes kind of thing. That was the whole idea behind it. But now I just, I film training just because it's fun and like, I do it like, that way. Oh, it's not just training your posts. Obviously we've watched it. Yeah. No, yeah we've, like, we've, we've watched your, yeah, 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 your recaps, yeah. your previews. Yeah. What what inspired you to do the previews and what like, what, what, what? What, like, sort of, I don't know, how do you come to your decision on who's placing and everything? Because I remember the one for last year. Yeah. Uh, especially for the 66s. I, I, I think that's what kicked it off, you know? I think that's what kicked off the whole thing. Like, because yeah. I only went on your YouTube page from the time that you did that, that preview. And yeah. I think that's like everyone else as well. Everyone started going onto your page because of that actual preview. Because it was so detailed, like, with every single class. And then I think that's what brought up so much hype with everyone that was convenient in it yeah so I, I did the preview just because i think i was it was leading up to the nationals no one was covering anything like all the mm. podcasts, you no know, one mentioned it it was kind of like this dead the venue wasn't good athletes weren't necessarily posting as much because everyone's doing the mind games where they were hiding training and they were just going to turn up on the day and do things so I that's was Joey, like, that's Joey as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, i'm not gonna lie when you said that i I felt it. <laughs> I felt it immediately. I was like, nah, he's tending for man already. But yeah, go- uh, I remember you I remember you complaining as well. Like when you did the preview, you were like, yeah, Joey's not really posted, nothing. <laughs> it was hard, man. And I think that's why I messed up some picks, obviously, like, you know, Dylan's situation you mentioned in the last podcast. Um, yeah. Just because like a lot of people were, you know, when you're trying to do a preview, people are hiding training, but you're trying to, okay, if someone did this back then, realistically speaking, if they're training, they should be here. That was what, kind of what I was trying to do all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought it'd be fun. Honestly, I, I like I enjoy watching powerlifting meets. I enjoy watching people's training. So I was just like, you know what? Let me just get my picks and see what happens and if people are interested in it. But do you, you got a lot of engagement? Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. And you got a lot of engagement for that, though, right? Yeah. Like a lot of people reached out to you saying that that was sick. Even like Ryan from King of the Lips, like yeah. he reached out as well. Yeah, it is. So That's how did that happen? The podcast, yeah, yeah, because that must have been big. As soon as he reached out to you, at that point, it was like, oh shit, yeah, I knew I did good. I knew I did good here, man. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the question I had was leading up to um, what Espin mentioned. There. Is he like that podcast did open doors for you, right? If I'm, I'm, it's fair to say, due to that preview you did, preview you did, that you can comments in the powerlifting international powerlifting in the world championship like in south africa these opportunities literally happen because something that you stumbled on and it just opened these wide doors for you yeah that's very true man like even joe i don't if joe would have not known who i was if not for because she watched the preview and she's like oh that was pretty good and then when i was at ipf4 she's like oh do you want to come and commentate oh is is, was it her that asked you first yeah she was i literally arrived sunday she was sat down and then she said hello and then Monday morning, she just literally messaged me on Instagram saying, you want to come down? Like, Ryan is dead from traveling. Oh, like, so, yeah, so she just wanted you to quick. sub in real quick. How was that, yeah. though? Like, how, how was that experience? But, like, was it everything that you sort of expected it to be? Or, like, did you have any expectations? 
No, nah, I didn't necessarily have expectations going in. Um, it was kind of, it's different in terms of like when you're, because I also didn't, I commentated like the B groups. I yeah. Didn't B group. So I, I feel like the hype is a lot more different for those guys. Of course. Yeah. yeah. But what, what I tried to do was like, it's, it's nice being behind the booth. It just makes everything more interesting. Time flies by like that. But also time can drag when you've got like a, a bench flight that has just taken ages to get mm. through. Mm-hmm. It's not but, an easy thing to do, but it's interesting. My yeah. question on that, yeah. Obviously, you mentioned B group, right? Like, what? Obviously, you're a lifter. You love powerlifting, but there yeah. there are fringes that get sort of like, I guess, not ignored, but glazed over. I would say, yeah. yeah. It's the B group. Everyone's focusing the A group. Like, I'm when when I was looking at Jurens's flight, I didn't know about who was tenth and below, bro. Yeah. Like how how because it was B group. How are you with that? Because obviously there must have been some information. You must, you must have been like, man, I might have to like waffle it real quick because I don't know nothing about these lifters, bro. So because think- it was short notice. Yeah, short it was, notice it was well. short notice, right? So it you only had only so much time to prepare. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was literally every like I did Monday one, and then Tuesday morning I got a message saying, "Do you want to come down with the next one?" So it was kind of like just always it wasn't yeah. that necessarily structured. Um, with the B group, I, because it's IPF Worlds, the B group lifters are still good. Mm. If that makes any sense. So, like, even in the B group, I think I commentated, was it the 66 or the 74s? Mm. Guys who were benching 190, 180. So, from that point of view, you're thinking, okay, these guys, even though they're in the B group, they can also potentially medal after the A group is done. Like, yeah. Joe, in this case, um, what's his name of the Canadian lifter? Oh, yeah, yeah. The... He pulled a massive deadlift, an easy massive deadlift in the B group, but also he was still... King Cuff. Yeah, King Cuff, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the when it's the some days it's long. Like I'm not gonna lie, if I was doing like um masters B group, that that would be uh that would be in the trenches, but the B group <laughs> was, was still decent in the majority of it. Yeah. Okay. So me, I mean I will bring us a bit back a bit back more. Um I know you you this is I think this is your second year, if I'm right, right? As a um, senior. This is your yeah. second year. Yeah, second um year. Go back to your junior years. Yeah. <laughs> you know, junior years, the big more are juniors. So I saw you've done 93. Um, I was looking at your story there with the 93. There's this, something you post on social media a few days ago. You said that people shouldn't be afraid to move up the weight class. Sometimes you've been thinking like maybe you're just restricting yourself in the weight class you are. So yeah. what, what, what pushed you or what made you to jump up to that 105? My coach, honestly, <laughs> he was my coach. It literally, because um, I started, so my, my introduction to powerlifting is very interesting. I didn't, I didn't start powerlifting from like seeing anyone or anything. It was kind of like I was training in the gym at university. And then a friend of mine got invited to the powerlifting tryouts. And I literally just tagged along because I'd seen people score in 200. And I was like, this is insane. Like, how do these guys do this? So that's how I found powerlifting. And then once I got to that, they signed me up for British Unis straight away so it was three months i had training then i started training there oh this was when um this was when british unis didn't have a qualifying no, total. Qualifying total. that was yeah the same. that was nuts yeah, i remember yeah. people putting it like yeah i told a thousand kilos in the gym or some shit like <laughs> yeah fucking stupid but yeah no yes yeah, so you were saying bro like yeah, yeah. so you did so just remind unis. what was the question again james i got sidetracked in my head no, i said that what pushed you to like move to 105 so when I did my first comp as a 93, I saw where it placed, but also I think my coach also saw the height of everyone else in my weight class. Like he could tell that based on, because I'm 6'1", he mm. could tell straight off, based on my height, you're not good. You can be a decent 93, but if you really want, and he's always been focused on long-term progression rather than short-term. Like if of course, you, yeah, yeah. He was just like, realistically speaking, if you want to be any good in this sport, forget the 93s, forget even the juniors, your goal is to make it to the open one day. So that's where we're going to train towards. She. So, so the, wait. The goal, sorry, Joey. The goal was we have got the seniors coming up in terms of like my focus is to be a good senior. So a good senior as a 105, no as a 93. Yeah, yeah. So it was just like 93 is not for you. 105 is the one you should aim for. So we just decided. Because my second comp, I was only 94. And I ate that morning. So realistically, if I wanted to compete in the 93s, I could have. But it was just like, there's no point being here. It's like 105 is where you want to be. 
But was there a part of you where like you thought, oh, you know what? It's going to take me ages to be able to compete with yeah. these guys in the 105s. Like if I'm doing decent in the 93s already, it's like, it's going to take me that fucking, because that's everyone's thoughts, right? Like, oh, you're going to jump up a weight class. Yeah. It's going to be crazy. You still need to make all this way. And then you see all the guys coming up and it's like, oh, it's going to take me forever, man. In your case, fucking hell, like everyone knows what happened there. But at that time, you must have been thinking, nah, this is going to be a long game. I thought it was like when he told me one of our, I told him that because <laughs> there's me, there's me and my friend, both of us signed up for the meet. We're living together. And he, yeah. he told him to go to, because I think he was a very light 74, but he said, realistically speaking, you'd be an 83. And then he told me 105 is your weight class. So I'm literally almost told him, fuck off. Like, it's not happening. Like, we're not, <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine myself being that heavy. Um, but Another thing that helped was when we started powerlifting, we did exactly, I wasn't like vying for first position or like fifth or anything. My first meet, I came 14th or 11th. Yeah, that's so calm. Like, At least you didn't come like 33rd or something. Or something like that. Like, so At least you didn't come. Yeah, yeah like in British unis as well. Because I've, I've seen like there's like yeah. hundreds or like in the yeah. high There tens. weren't that many 105s back then. I think I only like passed like five or six people. Yeah. But, like it was, I was so low that it didn't, if I placed 11th again in the 105s, I took that as progress because I've gone up a weight class and I still stayed. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. Kind of thing. So, yeah. So and, and how long did it take for you to, like, decide, not, not decide, but kind of, like, understand, shit, this is a good decision. This is a good point. Like, was it quite far in or was yeah. it quite early? No, it was once I did my second comp as a 105. And how long was, was that? Time period. It was next year. So I did okay. one British Unis comp and the next one was next year. I did a second British University comp. Um, then I competed against the 105s. I think I came 11th again. So I, I think I was 14, then I moved to 11th. And I was like, I was able to increase my placing against guys who are fully 105s and also a lot mm -hmm. older than me. So I was just like, if I can slowly gain and improve, I'll be able to catch up with these guys, especially once I reach the 23 age mark. Mm. Was you looking? Uh, was you looking at the um, senior rosters as well at that time, thinking this is where I want to go? Because at that time, I'm sure yeah. in Britain as 105, we had Josh Greenfield was 105. Sam yeah. Watt was still is st still here and he was there still. And yeah. story people was looking at was looking at uh, Screamer Manuel. That's yeah. the, that's the benchmark of 105 in Britain. Were yeah. you looking at those guys thinking that's what this, this is where I want to be? Bro, I'm telling you. Um... So even though I say long term, we wanted to get in the open. I didn't have, my coach has always been the person who's always had the numbers and being like, you can get here. This is where you go kind of thing. Because I started powerlifting, a 200 kg squat was mad to me. So me thinking about squatting 300, that just sounded, that's not even in my lane at all. So after that, that first comp, I didn't even know about nationals, junior nationals in my first day in powerlifting. Like, I just knew British unis and my goal was to turn up for the next British unis kind of thing. Mm. Um, so it wasn't like I was chasing any numbers. I didn't know any records, didn't care about them because I just enjoy the sport. So I was just like, I've done British unis this year. I'll happily do it next year and like figure out what I can do to improve and get better. So I wasn't looking at Scream Emanuel or Joshua Greenfield because to me, they were another breed of athletes. And I was I was a tall lifter, lanky, they a lot shorter very feel that in the frame so i wasn't thinking about them at all yeah now you are where you are now yeah yeah and i know we briefly spoke about this yeah what do you think of power thing now as a whole compared to when you first like i don't know laid your eyes on it like what 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 is it's i don't know x factor if you will yeah uh, I, i'll say do you want to talk about powerlifting on the whole like yeah bro IPF stage. Yes. Yes. PBCF? No, no, no. Let's go as a whole. Because obviously okay, you've been at the world stage, so you've you've seen yeah. every facet of what powerlifting is yeah. in America, in Europe, in the world. So what's what's your take, bro? I think it's I think it's it's there's a there's a lot of potential for the because I I think we're talking in DMs and you were talking about like people. Some people are saying powerlifting is kind of capped in potential or mm. dying out. And I when I got to Euros. The venue we're in, the level of lighting, the camera, the attention to detail. And then you go to IPF Worlds, the hotel you're in, literally the resort we're in, the yeah. people have flown you to go and compete in there. 
I don't think anyone was talking about this. Like SB wasn't flying out anyone two years ago. No. It just started doing that recently. And like the reason why they're willing to fly lift is out is because they know that if we invest in these guys, they're gonna make us money long term. SBD is a business. They're not gonna they don't gonna spend money for free. They're not that they're not a charity. So they see something long term that they're they're willing to invest in lifters now. So I think I think things are just gonna keep on getting bigger and better. SBD is handing out free gifts to juniors. You you win juniors and you wouldn't get anything. Not even the record, your certificate for your record, you broke. So mm. now actually giving two hundred and fifty pounds worth of free kit to people. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, because uh, obviously the experience that Jurance and I had was uh, far different from when when you started. Yeah, the, the lay of the land was very different. The names in the one hundred fives, like like Juran said, was still Stephen Manuel, the Josh the Josh Greenfields. And now there's you, 105s, Mr. Big Jump Pools, everything like that. <laughs> For the meantime, yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> obviously there's stories from the other weight classes. Uh, I'm going to bring it up during this weight class. And I know you you mentioned it briefly in your story uh, on, on Instagram. I think today, isn't it? Like, um, since Russ said he's going to take oh, a break. Oh, he's leaving. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you want to expand on that real quick so we can just open up? The whole conversation. Oh, oh no, it's just because like I feel like since Ross said he's stepping out of powerlifting, and like even on his YouTube channel, it's like I've been watching him for a long time. Mm. It's just and for some reason a lot of Americans are thinking that powerlifting is I don't know captive potential kind of thing. Like it's not. They don't think Sheffield is going to be anything worth it. Yeah. They, they think the Olympics is a pipe dream that's never going to happen. The IPF isn't focusing on the wrong thing, so. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, let, let's look at that now. I be, I believe what I saw in your story was that someone on the YouTube just for clickbait, they were like, "Powerlifting yeah. is dying out." Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. But let's look. Let's look at what we what we uh what we what we know, right? The the amount of junior lifters that are coming out, the the size of each nation and how many members they have, like in the GPF alone, it's still increasing. Not despite of there being I don't know the, the pandemic. It's still going on strong. I mean, there's people, even after the pandemic, that came out much stronger. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to name names, obviously, but <laughs> I mean, some some of them are in this uh, podcast right now. I don't yeah. know who you're looking at, but yeah, I hope you're looking at yourself. Bro, it's um, not it's not the one on the treadmill, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, again, I think um, just on touch base on that little bit of the American thing. I think I know Russ is moving away from powerlifting. A lot of people talking so much stuff about powerlifting, but people forgetting if some of us knew know someone called Russ is because of powerlifting. Mm. Without powerlifting, I wouldn't know who Russ was. Right? Without powerlifting, I wouldn't know who John Huck is. You know, I wouldn't know who Ray, Ray William is. So when people are dissing this sport because they're moving away from it, they're forgetting what made you. What made you that global star? What made Russ global star is not his gym. It's not, it's not what he does, his bodybuilding. It's powerlifting. That's, yeah. that's why sometimes, me personally, it pisses me off when people diss this sport because they're thinking, ah, I'm going to go away from it. I've done my bit. Yes, fair enough. He's one of the best lifters of all time. We can't take that away from him, right? He goes, come back, probably going to annihilate people again. You know, you got to give him that to him. But for people to diss this sport because of that, I just think like it's not fair on the sport itself. Mm. the thing is right Russ has an influence a huge influence in the power of the world so does um, Sean Noriega right them two for me I'd say they have a very very huge influence so it's like they could say anything they could literally say wait I'm trying to give an example alright this is a perfect example when Nori decided to, to do the mixed grip change how many people do you reckon changed to mixed grip literally forgot about hook grip and went into mixed grip well, I, can I don't pretty know. Much guarantee how, how do you, you pull more? In this, in this country, yeah. Uh, you pull hook, in, yeah. Yeah. In, right, cool. in in this country alone, right? I can tell you right now, a bunch of junior lifters changed the mixed grip, hundred percent, because of the influence, right? Because Russ said that you know he's going to leave the IPF. The thing is, if he has such a huge influence and people from this country alone leave powerlifting and go do another sport, the majority of people that are going to leave are no disrespect are people that aren't going to do anything anyway, right? The people with low totals, the people that aren't really going to do anything, not really going to progress, or they're just not in it. You know what I mean? They're not really invested in it, and they're just going to leave. And when their favorite powerlifter comes back into the sport, they'll join again. 
yeah. so it's just it's not really it's, it's not really gonna like do anything for us anyways like it's not really that deep to be fair but and what i'm trying to say here is just pretty much like it's just crazy how they have such a huge influence in everyone it's just we actually get to see who loves the sport and who's in it just for cap you know what i mean like who's in it just for like all this fucking you know just to post something clout. on social media yeah, sorry all, clout, yeah my yeah, bad all the clout. clout like just to you know post all these hashtags on social yeah, media I, just what, it's what just you, it's what all bullshit think of, what do you think of that, Mara? Like, what, what what do you think of? Obviously, you you you're in you're in the your Palatin universe now. You you can pretty much suss out like who's in it for the clout, who's yeah. in it for real, like yeah. who's like and who is in this year to to sacrifice, to put dedication, to put like blood, sweat, fears on the line. Not say tears, I, I you know. Like, I don't. I don't want to see anyone crying because of the sport, really. But you know what I mean. I'm, I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna make you cry, the British though, bro. Play that yeah. Little from, bitch. yeah, from laughter, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, go on, bro. Yeah, what, 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 what do you yeah. think of that? What Alex just said is basically that's it. Um, uh, I feel like what's happened is a lot of the people who was mentioned, a lot of them also, all well, the majority of the guys I've seen say, powerlifting is dying out is YouTube guys. So guys like Silent Mike. Um, Candito, Ross, back one. Now, um, back one, yeah, um, now hopped on the bandwagon a bit, and like majority of them, apart from maybe Ross, I don't want to say Candito. Back in his days when he was competing, obviously achieved a lot, but like since then, he's not necessarily been a competitive athlete. Mm. So, I don't even know who is that. Who, who's that guy? I don't. I've never heard of him. No. <laughs> Johnny Candito. For real, I, Candito. I, I, Enough, yeah. He's the guy that came out with that Candito, like what's it called program. intermediate program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it and it reached the piloting world by in waves. But anyways, back I digress. Back to the point. Like the guys you mentioned, don't you don't you think like there's I don't know like there's some sort of a line or correlation with their relationship with the USAPL and obviously the USAPL split. I, I'm, obviously, this is all speculation from me. Yeah. But it, it just seems almost too convenient. You get me like mm-hmm. USA also feels- also also about that as well joey just so you know these are people where they're they've been in the game for a very long time right yeah and their audience isn't getting any bigger so for them to post that is a huge clickbait so it's going to make people like us now moving forward want to click on that video an example jurens jurens didn't even know who that was so now what he's going to do is pro- most probably go on youtube search up the guy and now watch his videos this is why they post these kind of things to generate more views so yeah. when you're not like, and when you're starting to lose your audience, this is definitely going to make their, their their videos get more views. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, for it them to post that, like a it makes day. sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's, it makes sense, man. It's just it's all clickbait as well. Yeah. And maybe but, they're just chatting shit. Who knows? But but what what what's your take on that, bro? Obviously, going back because I'm all trying to circle this in. It's it's all yeah. it's all going to be cohesive now. Yeah. You have that YouTube uh, presence. Yeah. What's your take on that? Very like, small YouTube presence. No, no, no. Yeah. But it's still, it's still presence, bro. I'm, I'm yeah. at this point in time, you still got more subscribers than us. So to me, <laughs> to me, it's bigger. It's bigger than us in it. So it's big is big. You get me? Relatively. Yeah. Yeah. What's, so what's, what's <laughs> yeah. So what's, what's your, what's your sort of take on like using this clickbait thing to just, I don't know, increase followers, bro. Like that's what everyone on this platform does, isn't it? So, so, you're, open, like, so you're open to it, yeah. Yeah, people like they can tell they can talk whatever they want. If you're really in the sport, there's no way you can look around and say powerlifting is dying. It makes no sense. Like literally, I have kids messaging me going, "What gym do you train at? I want to come and train there." So it's like no one's doing that. Like you've seen 14, 15 year olds signing for the first competitions. You've seen kids that normally will be beautiful bodybuilding or that will be bodybuilding in the gym going oh i want to learn how to deadlift i want to learn how to bench you've seen girls actually even doing spd days like mm. when i back in not that i was a gym but back in 2018 2019 i could count the number of girls i'll see benching on my hand like it's not that was not a common thing to see was it like this <laughs> probably even less but now that i go to the gym i could that literally there are girls they'll come in and they're benching they'll sit down on the bench and they're gonna go for reps so so I yeah yeah, so is that is that like another thing that you saw as well? Like this, I don't know, like the influence powerlifting has yeah. in mainstream gym culture. Yeah, like it's it's you know it's getting it's getting just to your normal average Joe, like any other girl to bench to deadlift sumo is like 
I don't know. The oh, thing yeah. now. Yeah. And then you could, I, I've seen it now, like, the people, the people, the people like, oh, I hook grip because so-and-so lifter does it. Is there anyone that sort of, like, would you say approached you about how you do your specific lifts? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got, like, because I, I train in a CrossFit gym and, like, there are few kids that have come over and gone, oh, this is really good. Or, like, the thing is, whenever I see, because I'm, I'm, like, I'm, you know, I don't know how to describe it. I'm one of those people that if I see someone training like a power lifter, I'll just go and say, well, Gwen, how are you doing? Kind mm. of thing. And then if they initiate conversation and then go, oh, I see you're really strong. How do you do this? And I'll happily talk with them and try and guide them a little bit. Because I, I don't coach. So I'll just go, oh, this is what your technique looks like. You can change this a little bit. But if you want good information, go and watch this video. That's where you get all the detailed information you need kind of thing. So they, the kids that come into the gym, they're just always... And you can see when, like, you know, when you're training, you mm. do something in the gym. And then the next day, you see the youngins doing it too. Yeah. If you if you bench and then you've done wide grip rows, you see them after the gym, they'll do. So you can tell that like, they're watching what you're doing, kind of thing. So there's a little bit of influence there. Yeah. What do you, what do you say to people that are that you that you think is like has the leverages to do specific lifts? I try and tell uh, them to train, bro. I try. Well, yeah. apart from, <laughs> if I see them in the gym, yeah, I'll try and talk to them. Yeah. If they're outside of gym, there's nothing I can do. So done. Yeah. <laughs> I'll straight up just go and be like, yo, you've got good le- um, squat leverages or deadlift leverages. Like, in the gym, the- yeah? Yeah, in the gym. But not outside the gym because it sounds, nah, a, bit sounds- it a bit weird. Just grab him in a car park. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of like, uh, I know we touched on about how the progress powerlifting as the sport as a role and uh, as a whole, and we talk about the American. Yeah. Um, you being the best british powerlifter of all time you are the best british powerlifter of all time Jeez. what i mean all time all time tested right the one that most people care about um how what would you say british powerlifting where do you think british powerlifting is going compared to when you joined the sport yeah. to where the sport is now and you've been the top of top, basically the lead of that pack where do you think we're gonna go from here I think it's gonna it's just gonna keep on getting better and better. Like you've got you've got people in the open who are willing to push towards a new standard. Like me, you, Kieran, Tony, um, Espin, if he makes it, Joey yeah. if he makes a proper challenge. Um, <laughs> but there are loads of open lifters who are willing to push the standard now. But I think what I'm really interested in and I've been trying to watch is the juniors that are also coming into the sport. Like you again, there's what there was just a kid who benched 225 kg. Mm. yeah so that, that was nuts it's like and they, these kids exist like i've been in the gym where i've seen like some 16 year old come in normal trainer shoes some random waist turning belt post 230 zero technique and like these kids are walking around like some of them play rugby some of them play a bit of sports some of them do sports and don't do anything in university and kind of just turn sedentary like hopefully we'll see those guys come into the sport and then that will give us the talent pool we need to really make a statement on the world stage further down the line. So I'm excited to see what happens. I think he's just going to keep on going up and up as talking, long as the generation is willing to back. Talking about, talking about juniors, right? I mean, personally, right? I mean, no offense to um, anyone out there that joined the sport, anyone that's doing the sport that hasn't competed yet. So I'm just going to talk about the people that we've seen on the platform. Yeah. So do you think... Uh, the British powerlifting going forward, we have a good set of juniors coming along because I I I, look, I looked at the I did my research and I looked at some of the weight class. I'm kind of disappointed with the talent I'm seeing in the junior level because I'm kind of thinking, okay, you guys at this age you should be hitting these type of numbers, right? Yeah. So you're 21, 20, or 22. You should yeah. if you're under 93 kilos, I expect you to get close to a 700. Right, mm. and if you're an 83, I expect you to go north 600 or even 650 or something like that. But in terms of like I'm saying, like I'm looking at, I, I just look, I'm talking about in terms of the, the junior just went past. Yeah. I looked at the quality that was at the juniors, the men. Mm-hmm. I was not really impressed. You know, no offense to James and um, um, Nathan. Yeah. Probably they them two that in the different league, and the rest are just behind. I'll say what what's worth knowing because you you know there was COVID that took out a year and a half of a lot of juniors. And that's a very important part. 
important piece of time for juniors. A lot of juniors make progress. When they start, they make a bit of progress. Then that second year, there's a massive jump. Then stalls a little bit, then massive jump. So that COVID period would have taken out a lot of potential juniors that would have been vying for that 700, 600-ish total by now. Um, so what I'm, when I'm looking at the juniors, a lot of the guys I'm actually looking at are the ones who've actually just started okay. uh, last year. And then I'm just looking at, they started at uh, 180 kg deadlift. Yeah. In six months, they put 40 kg, 50 kg on that deadlift. If they can stay for another, because when I say juniors, I'm thinking two years, like when they're about to cross into the open. So I'm mm -hmm. thinking maybe 2025, that's when we'll really see the juniors come through. Yeah. Um, the, the rate of progression that they're making, some of them are making, it's like, it's really exciting for me. That's why, I, that's why I'm just looking at, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Because I looked at the, the, the ladies part of the juniors in Britain. I literally, I was so impressed in terms of like the quality of lifting I'm seeing in the ladies juniors. I've never seen it before, you know, because I tried to compare the ladies and the man, to, not like a strength wise, but in terms of like the number of quality lifters, I was yeah. like, okay, the ladies are giving us the show where are the men are. Because at the end of the day, me and you are like, you're, you're standing at number one in Britain, like, best lift of all time and i think i'm behind you and somewhat at the end of the day what we want is we want these quality lifters one day to come and take these spot not just look at those spot thinking oh i'm not gonna reach there yeah. or this is somewhere like it might take me 10 years no 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 no. look at the spot thinking i need to do this and that to get during spot i need to do this and that to get more spot why not get best lift in the world why can't we do that because other nations started somewhere. That's where I was looking at. I'm thinking, okay, the genius need to push a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, now they need time. <laughs> they need time. And some sort of incentive to stay in the sport. Because I think you also get when university lifters finish university and then they start working and they're not so committed. Mm. Like if they're little things that can incentivize them to keep on going, then we'll see a, a, a better turnover, I think. Yeah, speaking of in in incentives. Sorry, bro. Yeah, yeah, go, 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 go. yeah, I think you're going to touch the same point I'm on. Yeah. So speaking of incentives and stuff like that, I know you're currently with SPD, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Could you like go into, go into depth in terms of like what you get with them? Because oh. I know a lot of people that are like Durance, for example, I've never asked anyone, like, what is it that you get with SPD? Like, what do they cover? Like, yeah. sometimes you get like free clothing, money, like, what is it that you get being a sponsored SPD athlete? Unless you have an NDA, bro, you don't have to answer, you know. <laughs> is it ND Durance? Is it NDA? I don't actually know. So all hey, I hey, all you I, lot need to you lot need to revise this know, before divulging, you know. All I know is contracts that can be specific in terms of like indiv the individuality and in contracts, but you can touch the base of everyone what they get. But some of the details you can leave it for them to find out. Oh, okay. So I think very simply is um what SPD is actually doing now, it's no longer individual contracts kind of thing anymore, if that's correct. It's more like if you make the GB team, you mm -hmm. actually automatically get a two-year contract with them. And like, unless you're picked up by somebody else, they weren't like trying to overcross, overstep. But if you make the GB team, you get a two-year contract with them and then they'll happily send you to competitions, cover your hotels for, your hotel and travel for a certain amount. And then depending on how you place in that competition, they would give you a bit of money. And then just like they're doing with everyone else who does really well in GBPF as currently, they're sending out free kit or training kit towards your next competition. Yeah. When you when you said okay. placing, when you said placing, is that the overall placing or does it not matter for individual lifts? No, no, it doesn't matter for individual lifts, it's overall placing. Uh, so, so, you, so you did very good in that then. And you had a good time with it. It's only, the placing is only at an international, basically the world championship. We're not talking about European. We're not talking about a Commonwealth. We're not talking about a Western Europe like Espen will be doing next year. No, we're not talking about that. Yeah. But we trying to say about Commonwealth, Jerns. <laughs> no, I mean, Co Commonwealth is a brilliant competition. That's what, that's what was my first thing. <laughs> oh, it was brilliant. <laughs> Again, it is the... Look, I don't have nothing against other competition or international, but it is the standards we're talking about here. I'm not saying, I'm not dissing the Commonwealth here, but when you go to the IPF world in South Africa in Sun City, it will definitely differ from the Commonwealth in New Zealand this year. Because yeah. the amount of quality you get in a world, I mean, the more you back me in there, you were there. I mean, that's where that probably will lead to my next question to you was, 
what has been your best competition so far? In a, don't forget the ninth, the ninth, the ninth presentation. In the 105, what has been the best? The one that you went in, you thought, do you know what? That was hot. It was amazing. Oh, okay. Bro. Oh, that me- okay. Mm. So if you want to talk about like best competition. Yeah. Best competition. No performance. No performance. I'm talking yeah, about competition. Yeah, competition. yeah. For me, it was Nationals. Junior, um, GB Nationals. And the one that just happened, Open Men in that. Uh, the, de- the deadlift battle. It was it wasn't it wasn't necessarily the Delhi battle, but it was more in the fact that there was Sam Watt who was coming, and then there was Ben Pape, who looked very, very strong and is very strong strong on in um, in his training leading up to that. And then Mike was also competing that and we knew he had a big deadlift. Mm. But it, that was the first time I ever felt like if I didn't make this squat, I'm gonna get left behind. And like that was a different feeling to play with, like that. Like I'm, I'm a person, so I only get that feeling when it comes to deadlifts. Like I've always only gotten that feeling to deadlift time because then you're like chasing for position or something like euros. I had it a bit, but I didn't necessarily go all out. But that nationals was special because I did my opening squat and I was like, I cannot miss my second. I cannot miss my third. Cause if I miss out here, that's it. I'm done. So that was, I like that competition a lot. Yeah. What, what, what? Watch that competition though was so sick. Like even till now, that's probably going to be one of the most spoken about moments in Palestine, I reckon. That yeah. deadlift battle. I think like, that, that was just so sick, man. That's Next year, more insane. That comp did help yeah. British powerlifting as well, Espin. On to, uh, you touched on that. I mean, yeah. you you see the demand of viewers and the demand of people. Although it was in a venue where people talk about, oh, the venue was shit and all of that. Yeah, we as look, we had different experience on that comp. We all have got things to say about that venue, but. The comp itself, especially that part of 105, I think personally, I believe that's what actually put British powerlifting into the map for us. Because 100%. Yeah, yeah. Americans were talking about it. King of the Lifter were talking about it every single session. And then you got people across, like the French who were talking about it. And I said to myself, okay, at least they know we have got 105s. So they have a weight class. They need to know we have the 66 when you guys will pick it up. So who knows? So yeah, hopefully. No, but, but, but back to that though, Mo, like yeah. records were being broken left, left right, right and center, center bro. That, the thing is, I was there, Jerome was there, yeah, Espen yeah, yeah. was lacking somewhere trying to cut down to 66. But um, <laughs> bro, the, the electricity, I don't care what they said about the venue, but the electricity in the crowd was something else. It was chef's kiss, if I had to uh, put it as anything else, because boy, when, when we were looking at the, the totals and the changes and everything else, everyone was like, oh no, who's going to get it? Who's going to get it? Is it yeah. Sam Watt? Is it Mo? Is it this? Bro. It was better, it was better than World. I, I'm not going to lie. I mean, literally, serious, honestly, the 105 that just went past a World, compared to our British uh, 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 championship here, the National, it was better than World. Yeah. It was yeah. better. I'm not talking about in terms of like, Performance. Um, the performance of people I'm talking about in terms in terms of the comp- you know the 105 that one pass the world we knew Emil was going to this one as a favorite yeah right? mm. to me I said to everybody even after the I even said in, in front of Emil I said Emil was not a stronger lifter yeah. the performance of the day was more because yeah. he came in no one was backing this kid off yeah, bro. No one, literally, no one. Yeah. Like, bro, no one. You know, I know probably we're gonna touch about uh, word uh, later on. More, no, but... let's touch it now. Let's touch it now, because when you did those jumps for deadlifts, bro. <laughs> let me tell you, like I was watching it live and direct. I was thinking, yeah, no, he's doing nuts jumps. Is he? Like when you put it down, not even before you got on the platform, but when you put it down, yeah, yeah. or when who whoever put it down, I was thinking, yo, are they like? They're doing mind games right now. What's what is this? But what like what was your thought? Like obviously you knew what you had in you. Yeah. You knew what jumps you could take. Yeah. But you must have looked around and were like, yeah, these motherfuckers don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> um so I'll say in my sumo, my sumo delif has been a complete like we've we've been working on my sumo, changing things. Cause if you, if you know me, like I'm slowly evolving now, but like before my first rep used to be terrible. Mm. Could do RP 10 single and then rep out the many five reps or RP six. So it was always very hard to gauge where my actual deadlift strength was doing prep. Yeah. Uh, 
lead into worlds, he fine tuned it to the extent where I could repeatedly do a good single rep on deadlifts. And then towards the last two weeks, like we did a big jump at nationals where I think we jumped from 325 to 355 mm -hmm. and that was perfectly fine for it. And then doing IPA boards, we also tried that same jumping method again while yeah. jumping like to, I think I've jumped from 250 to 300 and then I've also done 270. I want to say I've done a 270 to like 320, 330 jump, something insane like that. Yeah. So we've just been playing around to see where we're. So when I got to the competition, I told um, Henry, I was yeah. like, yo, good for any jump. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So ideally, I was supposed to open up a lot heavier than okay. 2.5. But the issue was I was cramping on the day very badly. What no did you do for that? Well, no, what did, what did you do for that? Because obviously some someone pussied out like when they were cramping in it. I'm not going to name names, but someone else in the GB team. But what did you do, Mo? I, bro, honestly, I was just, I just one step to the next step to the next. Even like, if you notice, if you actually watch it, when mm. I'm lifting and training, um, they didn't, they, majority I was cramping once I got off the platform. Um, but sometimes before my deadlift attempt, I was literally cramping. Like my last deadlift, if you see me when I step out, I'm about to go forward and I step back and then I, I put my, my hand, I stretch my hand out. Mm. That's got my lats and my pec were cramping at that time, but it was kind of like, oh, I was just, shit. like stretch out, and I was like, "Yo, let's like now is not the fucking time to do." Yeah, that, all that adrenaline probably kicked in as yeah. well, man. So you don't know when Mo was deadlifting, how many massage guns we had to pull out. <laughs> how many, bro? How many, Mo? Every, tell us. Every single GB lifter I know, me, Dylan, Timmy. Literally, I was on the left pec. Dylan was on the right. Timmy was on the top. I was thinking, we need to get this man going. <laughs> Swear yeah. down, like what four <laughs> four guns? I don't know what was going on. Like, my buddy, I was also down here a lot. I I think so. What my idea is, I I was actually when I got back to the UK on Monday, I tested positive for COVID. Mm. But also Wednesday, Thursday, I touched in like a little bit of my recap video. I started feeling sick and like I was coughing. Yeah. Bones Thursday, Thursday, Wednesday night was rough. I was just coughing like a madman. Yeah, uh, but there was a cold that was happening. So I think maybe just because I was sick. And then I was lifting. And then I didn't necessarily drink as much water as I normally would on a uh, regular basis. So with me being sick, plus the walking, the competition and everything, I think my body was just locking up everywhere. So, yeah. But I didn't lock up in my lower back, which is what saved me. Yeah, about. of course, of course. Yeah. No, obviously, there, was a, there, was, there must have been an essence of it that was like mind over matter for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. You, you could have easily let those cramps get to you. Yeah. Like some, but you, it didn't. Yeah. What were your thoughts going into that final deadlift, though? Like, as soon as you were listening to music, so what was going through your head at that moment? Oh, um, I tried. So basically, um, Paul Marsh was in the back, and like I was pre-hyped for my second, and then he was just like, "Don't get too hyped. Mm. Uh, your technique will go out the window." So like, I was kind of, <laughs> I watch. So I watch, um, like it's called anime AMVs. So it's more okay. like hype kind of. So I was. I just watched that and then I was just, I was lending all the emotions I was feeling in the moment just go out. So I was literally there, I was going like, yo, I'm nervous. Like, yo, I don't know if I'm going to pull this or yo, I feel good. Like I was just letting everything out, but then I didn't overdo it to the sense of where I was screaming or shouting because I was yeah, just like, of course. stay focused and you you, you tapped into a different sort of emotion as yeah, opposed yeah, to yeah. hype. But which anime was it? Tell, let us know, bro, because oh, two out of three of us here are actually into anime like that. Which one was it? I can't remember. Um, there's on, like bro. I had so Black Clover. It, there was Black Clover, it wasn't Black Clover one, it was um it was a one piece legacy AMV kind of thing. Okay, okay. Uh, that was pretty sick. Yeah. Um talking about that last deadlift that has been mentioned there. How did you feel when you came out? Yeah, you said GB, where are you? How did ah. you feel when you saw every man and lady sitting on the floor? in yeah. front of you how did, how did it make you feel i didn't see anything i'm not gonna lie to you <laughs> oh shit eyes are all blurry we're like no it was so weird when i like i said every emotion it was I, every anything that came to my head i just said it if that makes any sense mm. so I, for some reason i have no idea why i have no idea why i did the kiss when I was going back out. I'm not going to lie, that, that's now minted <laughs> as you. I, I, as I, I, signature that was now. perfect. That's I, perfect. I swear, I thought that kiss was for us because the whole team, literally, guys, 
I mean, I wish the camera could, uh, well, the live stream yeah. could get it. The whole team, including Sabrina that was pregnant, right? Everyone sat literally in front, just behind the the the, yeah. the, the, the center judge. Is it judge? Yeah, the center judge behind. We all sat on the floor. And then I won, as soon as he started pulling, we stayed quiet. It was like, no one make a noise. <laughs> Coming up. I thought that kiss was for us, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It was just for some reason when I stepped on the platform, I just said "GB, where are you?" kind of thing. When I was yeah. leaving, I just I might have been because I was cramping, so I couldn't do anything. A lot insane, so I just did the yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, so it's, in 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 a way, it was a mixture of being hyper focused and zoning yeah. out. Yeah and, yeah, and then because of that, I just I just want to know because obviously we just had Dylan on the show. Yeah, and you all know what happened to Dylan. Yeah, did, yeah. did any of that just was sort of like. You just you didn't even notice, like the, the like the essence of smell of anything. Oh, or... I, people say this. I when I'm on that platform, for me, I don't I'm I don't know shit. Like I think people were saying that nationals, the bar was super whippy or anything. Mm, mm-hmm. I was just like, it feels heavy. It feels heavy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but in terms the of the platform, though. Yeah. And was that platform as bad as what everyone was saying? Because everyone's been saying the platform was shit. I did not clock anything, honestly. For me, maybe because I have a, because I've, I've shifted from having a wider stance to a narrow stance, and I've got pretty big feet. Um, so I've got like size 11 feet. So I just cover a, a large surface area. So I don't necessarily notice any dimples in the platform. That's what I've been thinking. But it felt like any other platform to me on the day. Yeah. I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Okay, no more. I think the experience for me on that platform, I would say this, like, maybe people hit me on this, but because I'm I'm not a unit in terms of, like, being these monster lifters when they come in, like, Anna, when he comes in with 385, you need to make sure where the bar is. Yeah. Me, I just knew, like, I got my 320 on the bar, I'm just pulling that shit, right? I don't care. The smell of the platform, right, you do not, I don't know how people smell it, how the hell would you smell the platform where your mind is focused on lifting weight? So yeah. if you smell it, I always I say this, the person that smelled that platform, that means the weight they lifted that day was not heavy enough. And Ooh. Taylor Howard proved us. He won world with RPE 7. So the weight he lifted was not heavy enough. That's, That's true. Right? To be fair though, everyone did have COVID after this. So maybe that was one of the symptoms. You don't couldn't even smell anything, bro. I didn't have COVID. I didn't have COVID. <laughs> Well, Jerris, how do you know, bro? You could you could have been asymptomatic, bro. Uh, I trust <laughs> you. I, I, bro, you know, I have a woman at home that is in, 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 on the risk list, so okay. I had to test myself every yeah. second. So is that, not, is that not why you're in a spare room right now? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> right, Mo, quick one. So afterwards, right? So afterwards, what was your like, main thoughts after that? Like, was it to just, you know, did you take a week off training or did you go straight back into it? I know everyone's quite different. Some people like to take two weeks off. Some people like to fucking go and do a straight SPD straight after. First thing yeah. on Monday. What so, was your style of training after? What did you do? My, my style of training was, because um, I had COVID, so I was locked down for one week kind of thing. So it was like a forced recovery thing. But like my cool. goal was after Worlds to take a little break um, during that period to just rest up because I've done nationals. I've done Euros, nationals, Worlds within like a very, very short periods of time. So I was going to take mm-hmm. a bit of a break. But as soon as I got out of the break, it was kind of like you're in this weird little place where it's like, because I, because I, it was a good meet, but it wasn't necessarily the meet we had on paper. Mm. That makes sense. So it was kind of like, okay. And I also knew when you get to that level it, and you see guys like Emil, Mikey, Coco, those like, and even Anatoly, when I saw the Euros, it was kind of like, okay, these guys, what can I change to catch up? Like, because once I, after Wolves, I was just like my bench. Like, these guys are Mikey, to catch up with Emil and Mikey, realistically speaking, my bench needs to be in this position. Or yeah. my squad yeah. be here, kind of thing. Now, Dallas is okay. So for me, once I came out of that lockdown period, I was kind of like, okay. Me and my coach was like, yo, you want to try this to mess around with technique? And then I also had things I wanted to mess around with. So then I just started messing around. So even though it was supposed to be a chilled period, and it kind of was because I, I started training four times a week, I dropped down to three times a week. Mm. I still have been pushing intensity, so heavier numbers a bit. Okay. Actually, uh, can I just ask real quick, what was the numbers your, you and your coach had in mind? Because you said you didn't exactly attain what you guys yeah. had planned. What, what, what were they? 
Do you do you know? Do you remember? So we normally do we normally do ranges. Um, we don't necessarily have one specific numbers, but mm-hmm. squats. I think on the lower end on the lower end we had a three twenty squat, and on the higher end we had a three thirty squat. Mm-hmm. So we're hoping for somewhere else in between, so three twenty five, three twenty seven, maybe. Yeah. On bench we had somewhere between two o two o two o two o five to two ten or two o seven point five, realistically speaking, and mm-hmm. then. Their lifts was basically 370 and anything about that. So yeah. you were off by, I think, from the high end anyway, you were off by 15, I believe? Yeah, the goal yeah. was like to be, because yeah. realistically speaking, we thought to be competitive for third position. Because yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. we need at least 9, 05, 9, 10. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. Ob- obviously, we had Coco on the show as well. Like yeah. what? What did what? And I don't know if you listened to whatever he said. I listened. What, yeah, I listened to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But before we get before what we get to what he actually said, what do you think of like you know before, like what you think he was going to bring and what he actually gave like on the day. So, I, well, the thing Coco had Coco has very good numbers, but then when you, so when he pulled. I think before he deadlifted, he pulled 350 for a single, mm. or maybe it was a double, a three, three before it was a single. And then yeah. from there, you could just tell his deadlift wasn't, not yeah. wasn't be on that level of 370. Kind yeah, of. In, in comparison to his other prep, yeah, yeah. Comparison to his other prep, that like that 350 looks, if I was going to pull 370, I mm. wouldn't want to pull 350 like that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, but his squat looked very strong. His bench, I wasn't, I didn't necessarily see much see much of his bench, but I had the feeling he should be in the 205, potentially getting close to 210. And then he also made some very massive statements on the King of Lifts podcast, mm. talking about 940 plus 950. How did you feel about that? I thought it was, I, I respect the kid at the end of the day. I respect yeah. him. He, he's, uh, when I met him, even at IPF Awards, if you meet him, even you must have gotten that feeling from the podcast itself. He's a very s- driven, single driven oh, person. Oh, 1 million percent. Like, and yeah. that was actually the next bit that I was going to ask you. Like, obviously, yeah. he he said on the show his longer ever rest period was seventy two hours, if that. Yeah, yeah, that was that's insane. Yeah. Obviously, like, what what's what's your take on that? Because you got COVID, you had to take more yeah. than seventy two hours. Yeah, of... <laughs> took a whole week. <laughs> yeah, a whole week. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. normally go a whole week um, after competitions, irrespective. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, ob- yes, yeah, he did an SPD, didn't he? He did an SPD after the comp, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was trying to get him to come to the pool. I was trying to get him to come safari. I was trying to get him to just do stuff. It was just oh, like, oh, yeah, no, nah, he said, yeah. he said, like, he was just like, nah, that was yeah. a shit performance. I need to, <laughs> but hit. even before that, I was, trying to, yeah, but he's just very I, driven. Yeah, you, Mo, uh, now you've you've gone to world right? i know you're talking about you spoke about you the number you hit is not really where you wanted you to be and all of that stuff yeah. is it because the traveling or is it because of world that you didn't hit those numbers because what is the difference is i mean i don't care what people say about world i don't care what people say about powerlifting yeah. until you are you do it and then you know what world is all about people yeah. watch world thinking oh Treat world like any other me, mate. World is a different beast. Don't yeah. talk to me about world until you step on the platform of world. Yeah. If you've never done it, don't talk about it. Just yeah. forget about that it exists in your life. So this is what brings me to the numbers that you guys thought. Is it because it's world and the traveling that affected it? Um, I'll say for me potentially it would have been the because so what happened was. I think feeling, so when I was going up for squats, I didn't necessarily feel as explosive as I would want to feel because my, I felt like my body was a bit, you know, when you're sick, you can kind of, you just feel energy yeah. levels are a bit lower. It slowly increased throughout the day. So squats necessary. I think it was mostly just rather than the travel, the travel had its own implications. And then there's also the venue being in awards. You're thinking about the meat. You're thinking about your performance. You're seeing Keiko, you've seen um, Emil walking down the street eating food. So you can't even sleep at night properly because you're just thinking all the time. And then also, like, the GB team hadn't necessarily had the best start to the competition. Mm. So that was also slightly in the back of your mind, like, leading up to your comp, leading up to your comp itself. So was there it was... Like, was, it, was that pressure for you then? Like, a, a factor of, of pressure? So for me, like, the way I just treated it was, like, 
irrespective of how the team was going, if I needed to drop my numbers, like mm. I'll, I'm not going six for nine or eight, like seven, nine. like I'll happily drop my numbers. Like I'll yeah. take my today. Cause like, but, yeah. But like, was there anyone from the GB team that would you say like, ah, you know what? He stepped up or she stepped up. I need to step up. Uh, Juring's went up, Juring stepped up. The man came a day before his competition <laughs> and came second. Yeah. So yeah, that was massive. Juring's and Owen was a big motivation on the day. Um, definitely. So that was really nice to see. I, I think, uh, again, I think me and Owen, Owen had uh, this conversation. I think we're going to touch down when we have Owen next. Yeah. When I landed in, I saw Owen. That was the conversation. I literally said to Owen, no matter what happened tomorrow, we need to bring our 130% here, right? Even if we have to die on that platform because we're lifting weight for GB team, we need, because we needed the fire. Somehow the GB team needed that because after what happened to Dylan, because we didn't have no 66. So we started right. at 74. Right? Sorry, like, so our 66 yeah. was still like doing step count in the fucking the Queen Castle. So <laughs> we started with Dylan. And after what happened, I said to Owen, I said, we had we are the starter now. People like Mo, um, Will, Adam Fuller, and even um, Ben Wharton. Um, ben, these guys are ben looking at us thinking someone need to step up. So we literally say, look, let's go out there and do what we need to do. That's what you see, like Owen's squad, that last Owen squad, right? If yeah. that squad was in Britain, Owen would have failed that squad. Mm. But because think- we knew. He had to, you know, I had to get a number. So that's what actually pushed her to for that step up. But yeah, you're right about what you said. And um, what you mentioned when you touched that, when the team doesn't start really well, it makes you a little bit worried, thinking, oh my God, am I going to end up in a bad wagon again? Right? Am I going to be one of those guys? But again, we, you came out there, you, you, you smashed it. And on that point, I had a bold question to ask you. You've competed against Emil twice, right? Yes. You've competed against Anatoly. Right, once. <laughs> so, do you think at the Euros yeah. you can beat these guys? Realistically speaking, I don't. So, for the way I look at it, it's um, Emil's had a kid, like you know yourself. Like you know, when you've had a kid, there's a knock on the training. Like numbers are down. And for me, looking at Emil, I've seen. I was at Euros and I saw Emil squat, and the man's squat is very stupidly efficient. Like that thing doesn't make any sense. Mm. So I, looking at his performance at Wolves, I know that's not his best version of himself. I know he can definitely push that a lot more, especially once the kid gives him the ability to recover better. Um, and it totally looks like a monster in his basement. I don't know what that man is eating right now, but the Bro. numbers don't make any sense. <laughs> Bro, I don't think that's a basement. I think that's a bomb shelter, you know. Big man. Bomb that's a bunker. That's a bunker. <laughs> yeah, a bunker even. Yeah, like, that's yeah. like levels. Does it that, not make but- yeah, but do you reckon then? So, in conclusion, is it a yes or a no more? My, the, the when I can bench, so the way we have it with my coaches, if I can get my bench to 215 bench, then I enter the conversation. Without right. that, the conversation, I think. For the how, how far off are you right now? Are you around there? As of right now, it feels like I'm very far. <laughs> <laughs> I know there is, there is the. I think, I know. I, I think most playing games with us, you know, I think he's definitely around there already, right? It is. Um, I know there is the Arnold's coming, right? I mean, myself, I'm going to the Arnold, but I'm yeah. going to use the Arnold as a springboard to the Euros, yes. right? So I'm going to use the Arnold literally. Maybe I, t- I, t- I even talked to Joey. Probably I'm going to hit two attempts for every single lift. But when I said two attempt, I'm not talking about 250 Joey's score. Joey's the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so, <laughs> hit two attempt for each lift, but I want to mean two attempt. Yeah. I'm not talking about 250 score or um 300 deadlift. I'm talking about I'm gonna make big jump, but two attempts maybe. But it's just a springboard for the euro. Is it that the 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 same mindset you have you and your coach, or you want to go hammer at the um Arnold? No, no, because the way the the way the Arnold is, you've obviously got Chance Mitchell and Anatolian, like you that's a hard catch up, and then I've also got you, Christian, James Adcock, all behind also who want to go for that third position. So what our main focus is for Euros is, um, not Euros, sorry, for Arnold's is to see what we can do on squats and what we can do on bench. And then deadlifts is not necess- necessarily the focus and not we might not actually even push deadlifts at all. Like we'll train deadlifts, Han, 
and like depending on where Anatolian chants are, we'll see what happens on the day. And also depending on what the crowd is like, because you're gonna have like people like Arnold, if he turns up, um, Eddie Hall, a lot of strong men. You know, the crowd put ten depends on where I am in the competition and also who's in the area and vicinity and kind of thing, what the crowd is like. Maybe you go ham. But the main focus, really, realistically speaking, is my squat. Can I actually pop something really good and then bench and then we'll take that information towards you, Rose, and see from there. So That's a valid point, you know. So if you see Arnold Schwarzenegger staring at you, you got to you show, show up. Bump, you're show, bumping up the weight. <laughs> show up and show up. Yeah. He's going to be that's looking good. at you like, wow, 370, that's a bit mad still. I, I think <laughs> if, I, if I see Arnold, probably I'm squatting 320. <laughs> yeah. Being folded in the back though, not gonna lie. <laughs> at least, at no, least but, I did that meme, innit? I did that meme that attempted 320 in front of Arnold. <laughs> no, but back to that point though. Um, obviously Arnold's is not like a, a weight class sort of thing. Yeah. Um, what, what's what's your game plan for that? I, I know Jurens and I have a, a different, probably have a different game plan to you. But what's yeah. are you sort of to look at? Um, you know, weighing as low as possible within your weight class or just a little bit over but still trying to be like well what's what's the i i know it's like a, a minute factor right now but yeah. obviously if, if you're within you know reaching range to like top to the three, weight class itself, yeah, yeah exactly yeah like what's what, what are you thinking for that we've not necessarily thought about that part because normally like wolves are struggling to stay in the 105s so i was actually eating to stay in 105 right i dropped a lot of weight during the travel and while mm. i was some reason but um we'll see what it's like leading to arnold's most likely rather than actually i've never actually caught yeah i've actually never actually done a proper cut into the weight class yeah so still I'm, saying, I'm walking around 106 107 depending on the day kind of thing and then normally once it's comp week i could easily reduce calories a little bit increase walking activity a little bit um and like just see if I fall straight into one in five, yeah. but it's not going to be the focus as to. Of course, yeah. I mean that's a good sign. I mean at least you're not on the high walking activity every week, every day, like some people. But I digress. Um, like I, I was gonna, I was gonna mention obviously, you know, we had James and Nathan on, and then they mentioned how your food intake was, bro. Yeah. Uh, and you just said now, like you know, you're still pretty much eating into the one in fives. Yeah, yeah. Like what? What was it like before? Because they did say that you were, I don't know, you, you, I think you were just playing games really with your food until you took it seriously. Like what, what was it like before? <laughs> How do I describe this? I'm not, I don't, if I'm not working out, I mm. can, I, I can go for periods without eating. You can go for what now? Periods, periods. Of time without eating. So like, fine periods. Like I could, if I, if I literally, if I, didn't eat at eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. I could be at four o'clock and not eat, and I'll be calm. Like four p.m. in the evening. Raw. Hey, Jones, like, you can relate, innit? So it's like for me, it's more like I need to make breakfast and actually make sure I eat breakfast. Unless once I go to that period, I, that's it. I don't. If I don't remember, mm -hmm. I would, like kind of thing. So beforehand, it wasn't. It was just I wasn't. I was eating, but I was not necessarily pushing the food as much. So I'll just. And also, I don't eat large samples of food. When, 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 was, when was that about? Like, when was the turning point for the food thing? Uh, it was at... Um, so Euros. Euros was a massive lesson because Euros, I got to Euros and um, I started losing body weight very aggressively once mm. I got there because I was struggling to find food and also eat properly. And then Nationals, no lie to you, I was 102. Like, yeah, no I, no, I remember. I remember because yeah. I was like... Yo, he's he's actually like on the verge yeah. to win, but he's still kind of like low. He's not. He's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he hasn't even filled in. So, so you're telling me like you did British twenty twenty one, you did Euros yeah. on on like stupid diet. Let's just, let's just put it that way. It was just stupid diet. It wasn't necessarily yeah. stupid diet, but it was just so rather I was max. So my focus before working with Christine was always protein intake, mm. and then working with Christine was more like carbs is very important. My carbs was always stupid low because I eat like. I'll eat a bit of rice, but then I'll eat stuff like couscous, yeah. which is super low in terms of volume. So you can have a lot of couscous, but it's actually not a lot of calories in time. Yeah, and exactly. Like, yeah. Like, that. And like, I wouldn't necessarily go my way and get like, everything I eat is home cooked majority of the time. So when you're cooking all your food, majority, you're not going to eat a lot of it at the same time. So, 
and then now you've obviously you changed it up you're a bit more on track with the food Me, was on down like on point yeah right? yeah and obviously we've seen the evidence we saw what you what you what you posted now yeah. if you if you had any words for someone that's like putting focus into their food now what would you say yeah. that if they weren't doing it before pretty much like how you were like what, what would you what's your biggest take from it I'll say it helps with recovery a lot. That's one thing I noticed with um, training fight worlds. It was just like I could I could squat three hundred and my body will feel recovered by Wednesday Thursday to go. Mm. Yeah. Hear that, so, what's your calories at the moment? Um, so what I was trying to hit during the lead up to IPF worlds was three thousand five hundred, three thousand six hundred. Before okay. that was some days maybe two thousand eight hundred, give or take. Two thousand eight hundred. That was before working with Kristen. And oh, okay, okay. Damn, for a 105 as well, that's nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's that's nuts. Yeah. So, it's I, not, can't, I can't ask you no question. Food, if that makes any sense. Even though it's 2,800, yeah. large volume of food because of the way I cook. Yeah. Yeah, did you notice as well that the more your calories were increasing, yeah. the even tighter you were getting as well? Like, it's that, and you wasn't getting bigger, fatter, I mean. Nah. The, the food broke. choices and stuff, yeah. <laughs> I felt fluffy. Oh, do you feel fluffy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I felt fluffy, man. Yeah. Uh, you from here, man. <laughs> <laughs> all, I, all I'm saying, I can't ask no question on nutrition, right? I'm, I'm glad you gave the advice. Probably I've taken a note as well. So, <laughs> it, because it was uh, myself, like, it was time where, as you say, that if I don't have breakfast in the morning, I would just have a banana and I go and train. And yeah. when I finish training, I have a kid to put to bed too. So I don't have time to, pre to prep for meal. Sometimes I just have a yogurt and I go to bed. So, You're not lying as well. I'll never forget the day, right? Honestly, I told everyone this. I feel like I've repeated the story like a million times. I'll never forget the day. It was the day before our competition at the Euros. Uh, there's about six of us in the supermarket buying our foods for the day or for tomorrow yeah. for comp day. Durance has this little basket thing. We all have so, so much foods in there. We have like, you know, we have chicken, we have rice, we have everything. Durance has a basket with one little piece of dairy milk chocolate, right? I think, no, sorry, it was dark chocolate. Yeah, that was dark chocolate. Time. And then I said to him, I was like, are you going like, to buy food? And he was like, no, this is what I have. This is the only thing I'm eating today. He's like, what? Dark chocolate before your comp, before anything? He's like, yeah, that's all I need. He's like, what the fuck? He legit just ate one bar of chocolate the day before his comp. And that was it. That's probably why he felt that dead. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, it's not happening. Yeah. Believe me, it's, it's not going to happen. It's crazy, though. <laughs> crazy, oh, day, So... Yeah, well in terms of like more in terms of looking the future i know um there's a sheffield coming yeah right and in sheffield there is wild card right yeah. i know let, let me finish this right i know the wild card people thinking oh yeah world is where you get your place from sheffield yeah. people getting us being spd athletes we have the privilege of spd picking what wild card they want mm. <laughs> is this something you have in your mind or is this something you're thinking i'm going i'm joining during to go and watch i'm 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 focused i'm my seat um my popcorn my drink <laughs> and then i'm watching <laughs> <laughs> and then i'm being a sheffield man <laughs> yeah so what about if you get a wild card I mean, that changes everything if i get that's that's too mad for me to think about to be honest because realistically speaking for me to get a wild card I'll need to, I'll total Mikey Davies and prove that I have greater potential than him at Sheffield. And then also Anatoly. I also need to prove I have greater potential than Anatoly because they're not going to take three nine, one oh five. So that's insane. Mm. But you have that chance at a Euro to do that. Yeah, bro. It's a sticky one, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> because Mikey David doesn't have another opportunity to showcase what you can do against because Emil is qualified, right? My, Emil is the main focus, to be honest. Yeah, so you have the chance of the Euros to do that. It's not something you and a coach you should probably think. Yeah. Yeah, my coach has mentioned it. He's 100% he's mentioned it. And also, he was, we did the, it didn't necessarily pan out that way, but I think I mentioned to Henry that we wanted to have the 95% for the world tool because my coach wanted that to happen. And so he wanted me to have 95% of the world record total by my second attempt on deadlift. So I think that's maybe might have influenced Henry's big jump. I'm not entirely sure. 
Um, but my coach has been thinking of that in the background. He he thinks there's a potential for a wild card. I don't think there's any chance. Um, but if I get the invite, I'll 100% turn up to it. Yeah, but then you'll mess up nationals because nationals will be around that time too. So I don't know how that will play out. Dispensation. <laughs> no, honestly, yeah, no, bro. Seriously, it's dispensation. <laughs> But then I think I think Nationals next year will be insane. I don't know. For 105s and 93s, like we talked about this very briefly, but for 93s, you think it's locked up? No, it's not. I think I think there's six people who can vie for that top position. And same for 105s. Name names, bro. Name, okay. The 93, right? The 93, I think, is a fight. It's, it's a fight. Literally, it's a dogfight in the 93s. But yeah. for you, who do you think those top six in the night, no, 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 that's too many. Too many, man. <laughs> we want to round out. Give us three, Mo. You're giving us three on this top podcast. three in the night, three. Top three. Top three. Okay. And, top and, three. Wait, 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 wait. And I don't want to hear the whole, yeah, but we also have this guy as well. That's kind of, we want to hear three names out of that mouth, bro. Hear us. Let's go. Three yeah. names. Off one, do, do it do it in ascending order as well. Who's your third, second, and first? Oh no, 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 Yeah, that's too long term. <laughs> no, 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 no. We are, you're here now. You're in the hot seat. Based off everyone's training numbers now. Okay, cool. Go on, go on. Yeah. But um, if I was so okay, you, can I do A group top three and then B group three? No, bro, just A group. Bun, bun my B. Names, my bro. Bun B. Jeez. Okay. Oh. So, okay, the standard ones you've got is... Um, Not the standard ones. The one that you think the top three will be. Go on. Yeah. Okay. Only three names, Mo. Jeez. Do you want to get some water, bro? I feel sweat off your brow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Shoot. Um, James Adcock has to make the list. He's yep. currently number one in terms of total. Christian... Aidoku looks the best out of all the 93s as of now. His numbers are insane and everything has been sub-max so far. The third one is a bit sticky because you've got two potentials. No, 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 no. Espen already covered this bit. There's no this, this, that, whatever. Who's your third, bro? He's right in your eyes, bro. Hit us. Uh, okay. Okay, for third, I'll have to move. Man. For third, you have to go with, with information so far, I'll have to go with Dapper for third. Cheers. Yeah. Okay. Dapper. So but, you, okay. quickly mention. No, right? no, 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 no. <laughs> but move, moving on, yeah. Moving, moving on. on. <laughs> moving on. Let's go straight. Let's go straight to 105s. No, let's go, let's go 105s, bro. Let's go 105, bro. Let's go 105, bro. Moving on. You said the names. That's what we wanted. <laughs> Someone, everyone, because I the pe- the reason why I missed this person of the list is because I haven't seen what the dead deadlift is at now. Okay, so, Christian, Chris is a, because he's a re- he's a well rounded lifter. He's got a good squat, a good bench, and a good deadlift. Wait, wait. So uh, let me get this straight: is Christian one, James second, Tapo third? Nah, well, I, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. Yeah, I'll go yeah? with that. All right, cool, cool, All right, cool. Say, say no, no more. more. All right, cool. 105, let's go. No, 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 no. Wait, let me, let me put this person in because everyone's sleeping on this, right? All right? There's Christian who's a, for the 93s, James and Dapo are very similar in terms of they have a good squat and a good deadlift, right? Mm-hmm. So Dali, da, Dapo has the history of missing his third deadlift mm-hmm. and he's missed quite a few of them. Uh-huh. Christian is a well-rounded three lifter, squat, bench, and deadlift. There's another lift in the 93s, Adam Fulet. Who's got a good squat, a good bench? He just needs to sort out his deadlift, and he's been making changes. Yeah, he's just a sumo. He's yeah, just a sumo. But we're, we're not we're not trying to diss Adam at all. Yeah, we just wanted we just wanted to know your top three, bro. And thank you for giving it to us. <laughs> and now we can move to one hundred and fives. We can move to one hundred and fives. Obviously, the lay of the land. You know, there's you, Samwa, yeah. Yeah. Ben Pape. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Someone else. Thomas Driver. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And, and there's also Aaron Hall. He's not competed in a long time. 250 bench. Ooh. Well, he's not competed in ages. Um, yeah. Kieran Grace coach. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that'll be... If they, if everyone turns up, that'll be a dogfight, I think. Yeah. And you said you'd rather do that than Sheffield, you said? Whew. I mean... What my, what's my potential for winning money at? That's my. That's what I'm thinking. World record deadlift. That's 
390. Well, that's that's 20 kg, bro. <laughs> that's a long yeah. way. Yeah. Would you ra- <laughs> so you'd rather get 390 yeah, no, no, no. at the British? Yeah. What? Sheffield is obviously more important. So if I, if I got the opportunity, I'll go Sheffield 100. And then, and then obviously you'll dispense British. Yeah. Definitely. And then and then someone takes your record from you. It has to be Sheffield, man. It has to be Sheffield. So, do you, when you look at look, when you look at the landscape in Britain, while we're talking about next year 105, you say it's going to be a dog fight. Yeah. Do you think these 105, the way you're looking at them now, and the way your training is going, the one that you're hiding from us, the one that you're not telling people, the way your training is going, do you think these guys have a chance? I think, realistically speaking, I think me. Sam, depending on how he does at Masters, I think Masters would dictate how well Sam can keep on improving. No, 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 Mark. I said, do you think these guys have any chance of beating you? The way your training is going, if you bring the real package of Mo at the British, do you think they have a chance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's what we wanted to hear. Just yeah. say yes or no. Yes yeah. or no. So they have a chance to be. Majid. Yeah, I think they have a chance to total in the 900 buses, definitely. And I think that's what you need to... Totaling 900 is not beating Majid, isn't it? You total 900, Majid can total 920. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm always being extremely humble after that 93 chat. <laughs> <laughs> so, so your top three for 105 next year, um, you said yourself, Sam, and Ben Pape, right? I'll put Ben over Sam. Yeah, I'll put Ben over Sam. Yeah. Oh wow! You do know Sam what take things personally. I know he takes. I know, <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna watch this. He's gonna come next year and we told him man fifty. I'm looking <laughs> to it, man. That'll be insane to see. I love that. I love the competitiveness in him. It's insane. It does push us. You know what I mean? You can't say you you've never been pushed by Sam. Look, I'm a uh, world class, like two world class below Sam. But every time I'm on the platform, it's okay. you that is look, you're number one in Britain, but it's not you is in my mind, or it's not even Ade or any other 83. The person who's is sleeping in my mind is Sam. <laughs> Sam's gonna say if I bomb my <laughs> you know what I mean? So you gotta love the competitiveness here. Yeah. So oh man. <laughs> that's, that is just like it's insane. I know next year the British will be insane. And Mo, I just want to have your view because we have 266 here on the on the cameras, right? We talk, we've spoken about the, the 93, how it's going to be a dogfight. We've spoken about the 105s. Um, this is not a preview show, by the way, guys. You know, people will be thinking, why are you not talking about other weight class? It's not a preview show. We're just touching. So this 66 is something I'm excited about next yeah. year. And if you ask me what are the top three, who's going to win is come second or come third, I wouldn't tell you, right? But I will tell you, Espin has got a bigger total out of all of them. All of them. Yep. Well, right? that is for sure. So your opinion, you knowing you, don't talk about because these guys are on cameras, behind cameras, let's pretend that they're not here. So how do you think that battle with the 66 will pan out next year? Oof. Unfortunately, Joy has just mentioned he's not interested in totally <laughs> over 700. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> you need the motivation. So, um, Keeper looks strong, but um, that bench obviously is going to be a massive holdback for him. Um, Espen's got the highest total. You can't fight against that. Or your every, basically the go, the game plan for everyone is for Espen to drop his last deadlift. I think that's that's what it is. Or not make weight. So it's you, mean, you mean drop even the second deadlift because if Espen make an open at two eighty, it's game yeah. over. Yeah, fair point. Uh, but I wouldn't put down Joey's ability to improve. I think he can definitely put a package together. That bench is respectable. And then Kibra is also... Kibra's had a long time off. So I think his total last year would definitely see a massive increase with consistent training and time. So, yeah, it will be a dog fight between those three guys, definitely. So what's your top... What's your one, two, three? God damn. Um... I bet against Joey last time, so I'm going to go Espin first, Joey second, Kibra third. Joey second? Ooh. Oh, oh yeah. shit. Hey, I'm not going to lie. 
I'm not gonna lie. After your last your last year's preview, Kibra took that to heart. And now that you said that, bro. <laughs> oh, now that you said oh, that, bro. <laughs> it's probably gonna be like Kib- Kibra, then Espin, then me fourth, because I was just hurting too much from trying to keep up, bro. <laughs> if, if Kibra can get his bench, like he's been working with um, I can't remember the guy's name again. JJ. JJ, yeah. If he can get that bench moving, it's it's going to be tough for even is, 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 he, is it the bench that Joey mentioned in our last podcast? It might as well be 70. Is it that bench yeah. you talking about? That yeah. bench is the bench. His, his range of motion is just too long. That's it. No, don't get me wrong, though. His bench is improving. He's he's pressing, I think, 110. 110. Yeah. So one, my man's <laughs> talking about 110, like someone's having like cream cheese or something. You know? That 110 is like my 5 by 5 <laughs> So, I, I mean, it, it, it is interesting and exciting, Mo. Um, in terms of uh, your powerlifting um, going forward, I mean, me and Espin and Joe, we said it, you know, we're probably going to powerlift until, you know... The wheels fall off, bro. <laughs> the wheels fall off. Or, the, or, the, <laughs> or we go to, like, a retirement home or something. So do you see yourself having that longevity or... Even, like, even if I'm not competitive or if I'm not able to put enough time towards it, I'm 100% happy to turn up to nationals irrespective. Like, I'll, I'll still like to do that every single year. Bro, we'll still be I mean, doing these previews in 20 years' time. <laughs> say, saying different <laughs> or the same names. Sam will probably that. still be there. Bro, I'll be on the schedule. <laughs> so how, how, does it, how, how does it feel being top of the pack in Britain? You were top of the pack. I was going to ask you this. You were top of the pack for a bit. So how did he feel? My man said for a bit. I was top of the pack for a couple of hours, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Until Sam what, took it that personal, you know? <laughs> so I think my mouth killed me. Um, I think personally, you know, is, is, as we always said, it's hard to get to the top. I mean, it's, it's easy to get to the top, but it's hard to remain at the top. Yeah. But I think, to me personally, I think being knocked off by yourself or Sam, seeing people potentially coming against that top spot. I think that's what is actually fueling me. I don't like being, t- you know, I mean, a few years ago when you go back to my career, I mean, it's not about me today, but Owen has always been on top and 83 in the country, yeah. right? To me, I wouldn't want to be in that spot because there's no motivation. There's no incentive of the, uh, competing or even pushing. But yeah. being there, it, it, it feels amazing. You know, I always say to people, that's for people that look at history. Me is all about what's the next step. So it's all about pushing myself. But being knocked off, knocked down, I think has helped me. Fair enough. You know? It's weird, man. For me, like, I, I get this question a bit. Like, sometimes I even forget what my total is. Because it's like, <sighs> how do I describe this? Being at the t- I've, I've maybe looked at it once to see the ranking and like I don't necessarily I didn't receive any certificate I didn't receive any pay I didn't receive a trophy I didn't receive anything <laughs> for this first place position so Margot's not necessarily like first or top or whatever it's more of the competition I'm involved in mm. and like if the competition for me now is I'm not necessarily I'm not the best one in five I didn't win nationals last year Right. So for your case, you were the best at 83 and then you were also the best in the country at a certain point. And I also guess this would have been good to ask um, Tony Cliff because he's been number one in almost everything. Like he's won multiple accolades. So I want to know what keeps him driving, what keeps him ticking. But for me, it's like being first is cool. Ideally, I think there are a lot of lifters who potentially can also get that spot based off. IP- it's all IPF geo points. And it's a point system that can change at any point. Mm. But I, I still have to climb the 105s. Like, I'm realistically speaking, I'm still within that top five. I'm not within that top three for 105s. So that's where my focus is. It's more of just climbing that 105 ladder as much as possible. And then if it comes to competing at IPFG or points for top in the country, when I'm at that level, I can really enjoy doing that, that competition. Yeah. So there's still more. There's still more in you coming. Yeah, yeah there's still more. Yeah. <clears throat> but, long, but long story short, to answer your question, Durance, and Mo, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. You being at the top is just basically a normal, just another Tuesday. So hold on, you're answering my question. Have you been at the top before? No, but I'm, I'm just trying to summarize what you said. Okay. I'm just, I'm just asking. What you said. I, thought, I thought maybe you said right, you're answering just, my question. Just, just, That's so, just savage. So, <laughs> no, no he's, he's saying that, but he got toppled off by just next man, isn't it? Because he was chatting too much. But it's okay. <laughs> 
No, no, the, the mistake I made, he came in on the day he was lifting, I was there as well. And he thought I was second in the country. He even said to me, oh, Jiren, you're second in the country. Um, Steven Manuel is still top. You could have beat Steven Manuel if you added more kilos, if you got your last squat. I was like, what's been, uh, Steven Manuel point? When he told me, I was like, I smashed that, mate. Yeah. I did not beat that. I smashed that. He was like, oh, for real? And he took his phone. I was like, oh, shit. I'm going to have to dev six at 367.5 kilo. <laughs> right. Sam is an interesting guy. So, yeah, it's interesting. Again, I mean, Joey, it's been, you say this, right? When you have competition in your weight class, sometimes it's exciting. It pushes you to work. It pushes you to go to the gym. And even your weight class, if there's no competition in your weight class, you start looking at weight class above you, right? That's where the IGL point probably. But I, I mean, no offense to the E3. I was going to the national this year knowing I will win, mm. right? No being arrogant. Owen was there. Um, Kunz was there. I knew Kunz would need, four, I told Kunz he would need 400 deadlift to beat me at the national. Right, because I had confidence in my squat, even though I missed that last squat. Yeah, I got scared because I thought I was that gonna die. But I knew two squat, one squat, and even one squat will win me the national nice. because I'm gonna open with 280 and no one will come close to that. Do you know what I mean? So it's like that's why you see, even in the interview I did, I touched the weight class above. I said, Look, I just want to be the best. Right. If I can't be the best in my weight class, if there's no competition on that competition alone, I'm going to go above. How can I be the best in the, in the entire uh, weekend? That's why I mentioned that people took some people took it really like uh, I was talking a bit too much and I was a little bit arrogant. But I was just saying, look, if I don't have competition on the day I'm lifting, I'm going to look at the week, the whole weekend. Can I be the best? That's how it's all about. And I'm sure that's how you're thinking yourself. If the 105 did not have Samoa and Ben, you'd probably be thinking, oh my God, I can't let Jurens beat me here. You know, oh, but I even though Jurens... I get to the 120s in terms of total kind of thing. Exactly. That's, how, that's, that's the mindset. And then you two probably, Espin and uh, Joey, I mean, don't think about the 74 total, but you're probably thinking, can we get more points than the 74 guys? Right? I mean... I, I beat Dylan before. I can beat him again. But moving on. Woo! You weren't given that energy when that, when that pod came up. <laughs> but you and nah, I, I'm sure we go to six. More, six. <laughs> nah, nah. I did tell Dylan though, and you'll hear it. I did tell him that I'll be going back next year. Everyone knows that. This yeah. is only going to be a one year thing in 66. Oh, anyway. But oh, we, we not all about know, me. We, no, but we all know why you went to 66 and not to 83s. Uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah. I right, Mo, quick one though, because obviously you keep it very humble, bro. Even though you're like, at the top right now, you know, you're the guy to beat pretty much. Let's yeah. be real. You still keep it very humble, bro. Like, you know, like, it's like, you know, you're, you know, you're the best right now, but yeah, you don't let that defy you. If that makes sense. But uh, you just keep it chilled. But is there like a bit inside of you? That's like, ah, these fuckers have no chance against you. <laughs> <laughs> Surely. Cause we're all like that, man. We're all competitive. Don't get me wrong. Like, what? Like it's, it's crazy to me. Like when people say, Oh yeah, I, I compete in powerlifting or I compete in any sport, but yeah. it's not that deep to me. You know what I mean? I hate when people no, say it's, that because if deep. you compete in a sport, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 you're competitive, bro. Like you're competitive. You, if, if you see someone coming very, very close to your total, you're like, yeah. oh, fuck that. You're not yeah. getting close to yeah, me. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. for you, you must have, you, you must be like that behind closed doors, right? They're like, nah, these fuckers ain't got no chance. Against nah, me. So the way I look at it is more like, so when, when people say, I'm hum it's not it's more like because I'm comparing my it's the level I'm comparing myself against because I've always slowly increased that comparison level just to like keep me grounded I guess into driving more yeah so when I'm thinking top of the country is not necessarily winning me if everyone in the 105s turned up I'm not guaranteed third, third place position not even second place or first place so I can't feel like the top dog when in reality my weight class I'm not at the top or could potentially even be close to the top. So it's like the total I have now is good enough to win me first place. But realistically speaking, it's not worthy of where my mm -hmm. competition is in the 105s. Kind of. I don't know if that makes any sense. No, 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 no it, it does. does. Sense. But, but you're slowly progressing as well, man. You're still young as well, bro. So yeah. you're still, you're still Everyone climbing up, still man. young though. Like Anatoly is only 26, 27. Emil is only 26. So, I thought 
thought when you said everyone else is young, I thought you were talking about in general or world class. Talk about your world class. Yeah. <laughs> People yeah. like us, you, we only have a few more years left. So, I mean, again, I mean, I think I can, I agree with you, being top of the country. Me, even, I always said, even being number one in Britain at the 83, it does not make me being the best mm. because the best was in South Africa. That, those are the best. How do you fare against people like that? And then if you can beat those guys on that day, you can perform and then you can say to yourself, okay, I'm one of the best. Yeah, yeah. Even, that's the fun enough, part. right? I came second in South Africa, right? But if you ask me, are you proud? I'm more proud of my bronze deadlift than the second overall and the squat gold. Are Why? You sure, Is, Drew, let me... After that SPD contract, are you sure? No, no, no. The co- yeah, the contract, man. The, 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 contract, the, the contract, they made it even better. Do you know what I mean? They made the silver even better, you know? The silver is heavier. You know, you got a couple of grams on it. It's really heavy. But the thing is, what I'm saying is, you look at the competition, especially the E3, I'm talking about my E3 class. As I said to Ryan, I was not the strongest lifter. On that day, I just executed better than some of the lifters. But when you look at it, team was team was even team strength was even stronger than Delaney. Realistically, if he had if he had executed that day, he would have won it. But it's just like it is what happened. But again, so going back to what you said, winning your weight class, in, especially in Britain, right? I'm not I'm not dissing the sixty six here, guys. I'm not dissing uh, British powerlifting. But winning in Britain does not make you the best, right? Or the best in the world. Probably make you the best in your country, the best in your region. But realistically, if you want to do part of the long term, you want to be competitive, as Espin mentioned, when you win in Britain, put yourself in the world stage. Where am I going to stay? If, the, if as a 66, Espin win the British with 640, he's the, our best 60, 66, and then you put Espin in a world, he's like 20th out of the 21 lifters. Do you know what I mean? That is that's where, disrespectful, though, you know. <laughs> that's where the standard, that's where we should start looking ourselves to, you know, to be yeah. competitive. Okay. No, hey, 100%. Let, me, let me just slide this one in for Kibra here. Yeah. Uh, you know, I rate you highly. <laughs> I want another clip of me right now. <laughs> I rate you very highly, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kibra can do some damage in the 66. So yeah, she he might be the, the A group total to person even. Bro, because of you, oh, bro. because of you, this guy's coming first again, man. Watch. <laughs> the only the only damage he's doing is to his pectoral, bro. When he tries to bench 80 kilos, bro. That's the only thing that he's gonna do. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> I think, uh, to me, like more, I got only one more question. I'll let the guys um ask the rest. Yeah. How did you react or how did you feel? When you saw Anna load 385 kilo a world, y'all ran, bro. I was training on the back and I, I ran to the front. It was insane, man. And is and is a different breed. I love the kid, honestly. Yeah, yeah. He's funny as fuck, Anna, man. He's he a funny guy. Man. He's got insane goals, also. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, for real. But but that's the it's... mental that's the the mind we want, is that the mindset we all want, right? Even yourself, yeah. your goals are insane. You think your goals are not insane? Bro, <laughs> years ago, you were not thinking about squatting 330. Oh, I thought my knees would break at 300. <laughs> you know? And now you're probably looking forward to next year putting 400. Sure. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, Joey, and before we close this up, any last questions? Oh, uh, yeah, I got one last. I got one last question. Because uh, I know, I know uh, it's, it's to do with Jurors. I'm happy you brought it up. I know you put the poll up about the whole Enna thing on what he, what he's gonna break first, <laughs> right? So it's, it's this a part, this is a two parter in it. So what would the vote saying, and what are you saying on what he will break first? What Enna will break first, yeah. Russ's record or his back, fam, or his legs? He said he, he said he pulls with his legs. So he, so either break Russ's record or his body. What was, what's he gonna break first, bro? Let me see if I can find what the actual poll was. Yeah, because oh. let us know if this guy is, is due for Snap City or not, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <Snap>. <laughs> what are your thoughts, though? What, are your, what do you think? Bro, I'm asking you. I'm asking <laughs> you, bro. I'm not trying to flip this back. I'm asking you. Uh, you, you. Let us know what you think, and then let us know what, what your followers I'll, thought. I'll let you think. I think Enna can do it, but I think Enna is... 
I think and is going to do something insane in the IPF mm. just based on the fact that he's he's not doing this thing thinking of like even when he was picking brands like he he basically said I went for A7 because they, I, I prefer them they were more fun and they make better colors like he's not thinking about contracts he's not thinking about money he's not thinking about he just wants to have fun yeah and mm. he's got his deadlift leverages make absolutely no sense. But the way he locks the deadlift, if he can get anything off the ground, he, all he needs to do is just snap his knees into place and he can lock it out. So he could potentially pull maybe 395. 399 is a bit mad, but I'd have loved to see him also really focus on improving that bench because I think that's where he can really make some damage on his total going forward. Mm. Yeah. yeah. He is improving. He's going to bench 152 and a half. <laughs> what do you, you <laughs> benched 140 last time? Five. <laughs> He's going to bench 152 and a half uh, euros. <laughs> he needs 160, man. 160 will be will be insane. Yeah, I need all right, that's gonna, all right, all right, that's gonna be the preview for this one, man. 152 and Mo's just cracking up there in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> what did the post says, Mo? I'm trying to find it. I'm still trying to find it. Oh, jeez. Oh, why are you trying to find it, Espen? What's, you got a last question for my man? You know what? We've asked everything that we needed to ask more, man. I'm, happy. I'm very content with this. You know, I'm so happy with this. You know, you know, this is almost like virgin two hours, bro. Big man team. This has been, this has been a sick podcast. Very good episode. Yeah, my Jesus. That Kibri, that Kibri moment's hilarious, though, man. Poor guy. Yo, I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm actually scared to post it, and he's gonna. You guys it. are talking about Kibri. You're not thinking about Robin. Uh, Robin, Bermudez. He's 66 Who? years old. He's a referee, bro. He just puts yeah. his hand up for everyone. That's what yeah, he's, he's giving us white lights on the day, cause. <laughs> he's yeah, gonna be yeah. the ref. Yeah. <laughs> I I feel sorry for him. I, you know, ever since we've been like making those posts. Yeah. You know, everyone associates him with a shit ref now, like. <laughs> I mean, I mean, all he all he can really do is pretty much do it with Dylan, Dylan, just own it in it, like. like he needs to me- change his Instagram handle in it to like. Yeah. Uh, so, white like, light Robin. Yeah, white light Robin, not TSM. Literally. Someone's there. But dude, you're right, bro, bro. It looks like you deleted I'm this poll. Searching, I'm searching for this poll. <laughs> um, I can't, I can't find it, bro. I can't I, find you know, it. I I, you know what? 70%. Yes, I think like people voted for Enna to actually break the total. Oh, swear. Back. Yeah, yeah, I think break a, to break the total. Okay. Confidence in Enna, boy. Say no more. Yes. But yeah, you but know yeah. what? I, I think we should wrap this up because, boy, it's been a hot one. I'm kind of I'm kind of sweating off that Kibra comment, boy. Like, <laughs> yeah, same here. Come yeah, on, I'm, my... I'm looking forward to that 920 kilos at the Euros. So I will be there to watch yeah. it and I'll be at the front row. I'm looking forward to that. Thank bro, you. it was I mean, there too, man. Eleven win euros. That's the problem. That's what I think. Bro, it was... what did you say? Why not win euros? Nine twenty might not win euros. Nah, I don't think so. I think you're talking nine forty minimum. Then bring it. That's a that's, that's a lot of weight. <laughs> because all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, if Anna can't pull the three hundred and ninety nine, he said he's not winning euros. So that mean. There's only a Brit will win Euro. It could be me or Owen. And I know you guys spoke about the 93. Next year is going to be Christian, James, and Dapo. You're yeah. forgetting Owen is going 93 next year. Also, you've got is it? Uh, what's his name, yeah. Will. Everyone's been sleeping on Will, man. Yeah. Will do something. Because all I know is Owen's going to bend 240, whether you like it or not. <laughs> so who's going to catch up to that? So, yeah, on that note, mate, um, thank you very much for coming. It was really good chat. Um, I enjoyed it. I loved it. And hopefully we'll do more and very, very soon. Oh, we'll definitely do more. One million percent, bro. 100%. Right. This, was, this, this, this one was a bomb, I'm not going to lie. So, yeah. Thank you, for, thank you for, like, jumping on, bro. And we're definitely going to have you back. But, yeah, peace out, everyone. Thanks. Cheers, guys. Catch thank you, you Mo. Thank, thank you, big boys.